in the U.S. as a child of immigrants. Growing up, we didn't have much money. In fact, for a period of time, my family was on nutritional assistance for low-income families. So imagine, going to the doctor was a little scary for me. It meant that my parents had to take time off of work and spend money they didn't have. I remember asking my parents, why? Why was it so hard to get help? Being sick made me feel pretty vulnerable. Why was the process of getting better so overwhelming? My parents kind of just shrugged and said, it's kind of complicated, but that's just the way it is. So I thought, maybe if I became a doctor, things would seem less complicated, and I could help people when they were feeling vulnerable and overwhelmed. But in training, I realized doctors often felt the same way, overwhelmed by the number of patients that needed their help every day, the amount of data they have to sift through, and the rote tasks that they have to perform. This time, I asked my professors why. Why was it so hard to get help to people in need? And again, I got a lot of answers, but most of them boiled down to, it's complicated, and that's just the way it is. <sighs> so, in contrast, I thought about how quickly things were changing outside of medicine. How I could, at that point, quickly find exactly the information I need from a Google search, whereas just a few years ago, I was still flipping through books in the library. So I thought, hmm, maybe it's actually possible to get past, that's just the way it is, to this is how things could be. So when a chance came along for me to work on health at Google, I jumped on it. Because deep down, I believed that technology would fundamentally change the way we received and delivered care. Today, I lead a team of scientists, engineers, and doctors in applying AI to healthcare problems, problems like cancer and diabetes. And there are 415 million people in this world with diabetes, and 62 million of them right here in India. Each one is at risk for a host of complications, including heart disease, kidney disease, and vision loss. So take Santi, for example. Santi is like me. She's the mother of two. But she has diabetes, and that puts her at risk for a disease called diabetic retinopathy, the fastest growing cause of preventable blindness in the world. The key to prevention is regular screenings once a year, and this is done by using this special camera and taking a picture of the back of the eye. This picture is then read by specialists. But, again, unfortunately, in many parts of the world, including in India, there aren't enough specialists to do this task. In fact, here, there are 15,000 eye doctors for a country with 62 million diabetic patients. So as a result, nearly half of the patients suffer some sort of vision loss before they're diagnosed. And this should never happen because, as I said, this disease is preventable. So this is where we thought AI could be helpful. So show of hands, does anyone use the Google Photos app? Oh, OK, that's a lot of hands. I use it too. It's one of my favorite apps. One of my favorite features is the ability to find specific photos by putting in a search term, like train here, that my kids are so obsessed with right now. So I thought, if AI can help us find Thomas the Tank Engine, can it also help us find diseases in medical images? So we took the same technology that powers Google Photos and trained it to read retinal images that doctors had labeled for diabetic eye disease. The algorithm we trained turned out to be pretty accurate, and over the last few years, we've been improving it such that now it's on par with retina specialists. But training an accurate algorithm is really only the first step, and there's so much more work to do, and we can't do it alone. 
So we work with regulators, for example, to show that this device is safe and effective. And in fact, this algorithm received regulatory approval in Europe just a little over a year ago. We're also working with partners here in India, in US and Thailand, to see how a system like this can change the way we deliver and receive care. So what does this look like concretely? Well, one of the reasons it's so difficult to get care and get screening is that a visit to the hospital for this procedure isn't straightforward. This is especially true for patients who live in rural areas. While most of them will live near a primary care center or a vision center, the nurses here don't have the expertise to do the screening. So patients have to travel to specialty eye hospitals, and usually this can take over a day. And this means finding someone to take care of their children and coping with lost wages. So now, with the AI installed in the facilities closer to where they live, patients can get care easily and efficiently. And this means that they don't have to choose between caring for themselves and providing for their loved ones. What does this mean for doctors? Well, a tool like this helps doctors detect disease instantaneously, which means that they can counsel their patients right then and there and get them started on a treatment plan right away. Today, we are in five clinics in Tamil Nadu, and we're hoping to roll this system out to more people across the country. When I first started on this project about four years ago, uh, I didn't think we would be here today, and it's been incredibly humbling to see how a small research idea like this has blossomed into something that could save the lives of millions. <laughs> and the best part? That's just the beginning. How many of you have gone to a doctor's office and come away not exactly sure what happened, what the doctor told you, and what to do next? Yeah, that's most people. <laughs> I've had that feeling too. Now, imagine if you were hard of hearing, or you spoke a different language than your doctor. AI can help with medical translation. It can also help with auto-documentation and auto-summarization. How many of you have battled with cancer or know someone who has? In a couple of recent papers, we've shown that AI can help detect lung cancer and breast cancer and an accuracy that it meets or exceeds that of radiologists. And this means, with the help of AI, doctors can eventually reduce the number of cancer scares and help detect the disease earlier when it's more treatable. So when I was a kid, I thought expert care was reserved for people who had money or lived in the right places. And when I was a medical student, I was worried that that wouldn't change because well, that's just the way it is. And now I think that's the way it was. And with the help of AI, we could do so much more for patients like Santi. Best part, we barely scratched the surface. Ultimately, I believe, if doctors, scientists, and engineers work together, we have the opportunity to address some of the biggest challenges in healthcare and help all of us live happier, healthier lives. Thank you.